Hello, I'm Javis Lewis, and in this episode, I'm going to show you how to measure DAS objects in Blender. This was a viewer question actually by Kev Doc Sutton. Hello, Kev Doc. And he wanted to know how to do this. And I have in one of our little discussions, I've pointed him to a plugin that you can get from the DAS store, which is this one here, Measure Metrics. And that will allow you to measure the distances of any of your objects dimensions directly inside DAS Studio. I believe they do that by adding another pane and that pane then adds these planes to your objects and that will then determine the exact size of these objects. So play around with that uh, if you are so inclined. However, the thing is, it is $50 if it's not on sale, and that's a tiny bit steep for me, I find. There's an easier way to do this in Blender, and that is free. So I think what we should be starting out with is an object of which we know the exact dimensions, and I thought maybe we can use Victoria 8. Her dimensions are shown at the bottom of the sales page, namely here. Height is six foot or 183 centimeters. Bust circumference, waist circumference, and low hip circumference. I don't exactly know where they're measuring this, but these are good guides that we can replicate in Blender. Let's have a look in DAS Studio where I've already loaded Victoria 8 in. And the first step that we're gonna do from here is we need to export that object out of here. So we can do that by simply heading over to File, Export, and that'll bring up a file dialog first of all. Maybe we call our object Victoria 8. There we go. Select Wavefront OBJ as the export format. Hit save. And then this dialog comes up, which lets us pick the options with which we'd like to export the object. So what I suggest you do, you head over to this menu here and select DAS Studio, where one unit is one centimeter. That's not what Blender knows. Uh, we need to divide this number, scale 100, by 100 so that we arrive at 1. That's important. So uh, that's what we need to do here. Make sure the scale is set to 1. There is a Blender export preset, by the way, but that's broken. And DAS looks like they just don't want to fix it. So, you know, don't use that. It is enticing to do that, but don't touch that. Use the DAS preset, set the scale to 1. And then the only other thing I would recommend you do is not to write any surfaces, only because we don't need it. And if you untick this box down here, then you just create one file, a single file, which is the OBJ file, and that's all we need. Hit accept, and DAS Studio will export our object here. Now let's get over to Blender. I'm using Blender 2.8 here. This is the current version built on the 26th of June. It's still in beta, but in a few days, I, I believe it's gonna come out for general release, Blender 2.8, new interface and everything. We've picked those export options there, by the way, because Blender doesn't have import options as far as I know, so it's easier to do this in DAS Studio on the export. We have that cube here, select the cube, hit X to get rid of that, and then head over to File, Import, Wavefront, OBJ, and that will allow us to bring Victoria in now. I've saved her on my desktop. There she is, Victoria 8. There are some, some options on the bottom here. Uh, for example, this is the default here, split. I would say select keep vertex order. Doesn't make a major difference, but uh, that's all we're gonna do here. Hit import, and now Blender will load our object. Now, Victoria is gonna come in, hopefully, at the correct size. If she comes in huge, and even if you've left the cube in, and you'll see that the cube is tiny compared to Victoria, which is now, who's now massive, then that means you probably haven't exported the correct dimensions there. There are two ways in which we can measure in Blender, as far as I know. There's probably more options, but this is, this is how I know. There's a new option in Blender 2.8 that lets us measure the distances between two points. So if we were to go for the height, for example, we'd measure from here to the very bottom of the figure. And we can do that with this little icon on the left here, which is called measure. If you hover over it, it gives you a little rundown of how it works. So you'll be left clicking and dragging from one vertex to another or from one point in the scene to another. And that will give you the exact size there. Before we do that, I just wanted to check the units that we're gonna be displaying for this experiment. So that is in the scene tab. That's the one with the little primitives on here. And in it, we have one menu that's called units. Let me close that down here. So yeah, units, they're currently set to metric. They can also be set to none or imperial. 
I'm going to stick with, whoops, I'm going to stick with metric. And then on the length parameter here, it says meters. I think that'll be, it'll be probably more beneficial if we do centimeters instead because Victoria is just not that big. So we should arrive at something along the lines of 183 centimeters for her height. Now, what's the best way to measure it? In principle, you just select this measure tab here until it's blue, and then you just left click and drag from one point to the next. So from here to there. And then in the middle, it'll show you how long that is. That creates a ruler. You can have as many of them as you like. So from here to there, you can tumble around your scene and you can see how that works. It's basically measuring through the object. So it doesn't take into consideration the volume of your objects. It's literally from one point to another, but it'll be helpful in some instances. Now to do this accurately, first of all, in order to get rid of these, if you've uh, put some in your scene, you can just click on one and then hit X followed by X again, that'll get rid of that ruler. So they're basically ruler objects. X gets rid of them. If you want to measure Victoria accurately from the top to the bottom, you have to take geometry out of the occasion and probably look at her from the front. And that's achieved by pressing the number one key on your numpad. That'll take the perspective out and it'll let you put one point of the measure at the very top here and then left click and drag to the very bottom. And look at that. If I'm, I think she's not quite standing on the floor, so she's just about hovering there. I didn't correct that position. If I let go of that, I can see that this is indeed 183.785 centimeters, or probably, in other words, if we look at the description, probably exactly six foot, which is what the DAS website says it is. So that's good news. So that's how you measure distances ignoring the volume of the object. But that may not be beneficial if you're looking for something like the circumference. So if we wanted to emulate, if we wanted to measure the circumference of her waist, for example, what we need to do then, let me just get rid of this ruler here first by clicking on it and then just clicking on it again, Xing on it again. We have to employ the help of a little add-on. It's kind of a plugin for Blender. It comes with Blender, but you have to activate it to make use of it. And it's called Measure It. It's made by Antonio Vasquez. Hello, Antonio, in case you're watching. And it is a marvelous plugin. It's made its way into the official Blender repository, and we can enable it by heading over to Edit, Preferences, and then you head over to Add-ons over here. And I can see it here already. It's enabled, Measure It, there it is. But if you can't find it in this long list, you just search for it. So measure it there we go it's the only one that comes up measure it all you need to do is enable it by ticking the box here and then that should save it new in this branch of blender 2.8 there's auto saving preferences so you can also save the current state all the versions of blender had a discrete save button there but it looks like in the latest version of the blender beta it's now auto saving my preferences so that's awesome in order to make use of this add-on we need to be in edit mode so select victoria so that she outlines herself in orange, then hit the tab key. That'll get us into Blender's edit mode. And that's now currently got all her vertices selected. I'm gonna hit A to deselect that. And then I'm gonna go over to edge selection mode. And that's that middle button here. And I'm thinking that the waist is probably somewhere around here. I think I'm not an expert on these things, but I think that'll be the waste. So if I, I can just click on any of these edges to highlight them, I would like to highlight all the way around the figure. So I can hold down alt and then click an edge and that'll highlight the whole thing around her body. Now that's exactly what I want. It's just so that there's something selected that we can now measure. So in essence, we're going to measure every single edge adding everything together and then we're going to come up with a final result which is the circumference. So in order to use that add-on we're going to have to hit the N key that brings up this little panel here and then on the view tab this is where we can make use of our measure it add-on which is down here measure it tools. I'm going to go ahead and close these things down so that we have a little bit more you know focus on here. So what we can do is first of all, click the big show button and that'll kind of show anything that we're gonna measure in our scene. And now we're gonna go and head over to the little sum menu here. These are just placeholders from A to Z. I'm just gonna click A, that means in A, this is now gonna be summed up what I've selected as soon as I hit segment. And when I do that, something rather weird seems to happen and that is that 
my scene now has lots of these blue lines here. It's not that visible because my object is kind of large. What it does here is it's showing me that from here to there, it is whatever distance up here, and then it's showing me from here to there, it's the same distance here. If you do this with a much simpler sphere or a much simpler object, you will probably be able to read these lines. In our case, we don't need to because we just want to know what happens in the addition of all these edges together. And we can see that by scrolling down to the very bottom where we can see here group A now totals 0.66 meters. This is one item in which the units are not updated. I guess because it's an add-on, it doesn't take the units into consideration. So 0.66 meters is in fact 66 centimeters in total. So let's just see if that is indeed correct. If we go back to the DAS website, we can see that the waist circumference is indeed 66 centimeters. So it is correct what that plugin does there. So select the edge loop that you want to measure the circumference in, pick a group, hit segment, and that will measure everything for you and add it all up at the very bottom. And if you're done with that, just click delete all, and then all that is gone. That is how I know how to measure DAS objects in Blender. I hope this was helpful. If you like this video, then of course, please share it with friends, family, and total strangers. And if you know another way, please leave me a comment. I'd love to find out more if you have one. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll bid you adieu. Bye-bye.